So, Mark, tell me about coding at the speed of thought. Rory, coding at the speed of thought is writing code so fast, there's very little time between the time you think it and the time you actually see that code on screen. So the code just flows down about as fast as it takes to read it. In order to code at the speed of thought, we have to make things more efficient. Obviously, we're not going to improve your typing speed sure. to make that change. So what we have to do is find ways so that you work less, you press fewer keys to get the code that you want, the code that's in your head. Okay. And that's the essence behind it. And so there's a core set of Code Rush features, such as refactorings and templates, which are like code snippets on steroids, IntelliRush, which is like IntelliSense on steroids, and code providers, which are like you on steroids. Code providers make the changes that you would make to the code, and they do it in an intelligent way. So common kinds of things that you would do to the code again and again. So that's like a code provider. Okay. All of those features and more that we'll go through in this series work together to help you write code with the smallest amount of effort. So even if you don't have a goal of writing code faster, right, you might have a goal of writing code with less work. So maybe you want to avoid RSI. So you want your hands to do less work during the day. Code Rush and this course is going to show you how to do that. Cool, Mark. How do we get started then? The first thing to do if you haven't done this already is to bring up the setup wizard. That's in the Code Rush menu. So after installing Code Rush, bring up the setup wizard. And it might look a little bit like this. This is an early version of it. And by the final release, this will go through a few UI changes so that your version may look slightly different from what I'm showing here. Mm -hmm. This first option for structural highlighting, it doesn't really matter from the standpoint of high-speed coding. So you can choose whichever option you want here, whether you want to see lines between the braces or not. This one can have a big impact on you, though. If you have a numeric keypad, an extended keyboard, I highly recommend that you choose Add Numeric Keypad Bindings. Choose that option. And that will give you five shortcuts to very common developer tasks, such as refactoring or accessing code providers, jumping to navigation, and selecting by logical blocks. All of those are together with one hand, and you can do some seriously fast one-handed coding if you choose this option. Smart semicolon, it's only getting smarter and more powerful. I strongly recommend that you select this, especially if you're a C-sharp developer. One key selection embedding. Again, I strongly recommend this feature as well. You can select a block of code, hit a single letter, and add braces around it. And it's that fast, and you're done. Template expansion. I suggest you hit one of these two keys. I prefer the space bar because it's bigger, fatter, and easier to hit, and I can use it with either thumb. So it's a little bit more efficient than that tab key, which is a little smaller and requires a little more precision. If things require more precision, that means more thought. And what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of thought that you spend hitting the keystrokes and instead allow you to reallocate that thought into the design of your application, right? Thinking about those new ideas for your application. Sure. Drop marker before jump. This is a navigation solution, but often when we write code, we go to other places, like to declare things or create classes. Yep. Or refactorings might involve changes in multiple spots. Drop marker before jump allows us to do that by pressing the escape key after we've gone to that location. So this idea that we can drill down in layers and pop back up through those layers by hitting the escape key can make us incredibly fast. Bypass escape to cancel selection. So this is a Visual Studio feature that allows you to cancel a selection by pressing the escape key. And I've just talked about using that escape key to jump back. And what happens is sometimes there'll be a selection and when there is, you'll have to press escape key once to cancel it and then second time to jump back. And we find that gets in the way of a really smooth navigation experience. Note that you can always use the left or right arrow keys to cancel selections anyway, so you don't really need this extra escape key binding. By the way, this page shows you a little bit of the history in Visual Studio of how this came to be. I recommend you bypass that option, keep it dedicated to Code Rush, you can still use Escape to close menus and tooltips and IntelliSense. That all still works. However, when those things are not up, we can use Escape to jump back to where we were. And then finally, I suggest that you enable IntelliRush because that is going to help you filter out and find items faster using its advanced filtering, which allows you to filter off of methods, properties, events, and other kinds of symbols that are out there. And that's it. So the first option, doesn't matter what you select for that. The rest should all be true. And the template expansion key, of course, should be either space or the tab key. That's my recommendation. If you don't have a numeric keypad binding, then you can set this to false. And we'll still show you ways that you can write code quickly. Okay. So that wizard gets you essentially access to key parts of Code Rush for configuration. You can, of course, bring up the options dialog and come up here and search for smart, for example. And there you can see there's the smart semicolon page. So you can find pages that you're interested in and individually tweak them here as well. 
We'll show you more of this in future videos. The last thing I want to show with regards to that are that there, we have these two menu items here that take you to pages in the options dialog. So if I want to get to shortcuts and change a shortcut binding, I can go in there, just select that, and it brings up the shortcut binding page, and I can select a shortcut, and I can see what the keys are and make the changes. And that's it. Okay. So quick overview. When we're first setting up CodeRest, the first thing we have to do is go through that setup wizard. Uh, we're recommending that you choose more or less all the orange options because those are our recommendations for the most efficient features to use. But obviously you can choose not to have them if you want to. That's no trouble. You can rerun that setup wizard at any time and change those settings as much as you like. There's a greater degree of control within the options. So all of those options are findable in there using the, the search panel. And there are some quick ways to get to a couple of those specific pages just in case uh, you should want to go directly there rather than trying to find them because we feel that they maybe get used a little more often than the others. Yes, exactly. You can go to shortcuts or the code templates page. We'll show you more about those in upcoming videos. So you set your options and away you go. Again, the reason this is all valuable is we want to reduce the amount of brain power and physical effort that is required to write code. That's what's going on here. In each of the videos that you see that follow this video, focusing on tasks, tasks like declaring types, declaring properties, that sort of thing, we are going to show you the features in CodeRush that work together to help you work less. And if you're working less, that means you're writing code faster. And so each video is going to pay for itself. Each video is going to be about five minutes long, and you will make up that five minutes by the end of the day if you use the features that you see in that. So it's the course is going to pay for itself with regards to return on investment. I recommend each day you learn and you practice each one of these, and you're going to be writing code at unbelievable speeds by the end of the course. Well, thanks very much, Mark, and we'll see you in the next video.